Welcome back for another video. I'm in an interesting position this week. I've got two free transfers and there's nowhere obvious to spend them. Burning a transfer is off the table, so I might even buy a player that doesn't double in 34 with a view to buying two next week. So let's have a look at the team selection for Gamic 33 and the transfer plans. Starting with a review of how last game it went. 63 points all out, which was a tiny red arrow, more or less hold rank and just inside the top 100k. It was the toughest gaming of the season choosing a captain and in the end the FPL gods were kind, with Sun, Salah, Palmer and Haaland all returning and not much between them, Palmer and Sun with 5 points, Haaland and Salah with 8. Saka did the best of them all with a 10 pointer, scoring from the penalty spot against Brighton before coming off at 63 minutes. Neto was on course for a 10 point haul, he made 7 saves against Luton before conceding in the 73rd minute and again in the last minute to lose the game, painful double clean sheet wipeout. Dubravka fared better with an away clean sheet against Fulham for 9 points. I perhaps should have put more thought into the bench order. Zabania away to Luton or Mateta home to City. Went for Zabania first on the bench, he was subbed on for Gusto, who was reportedly ill, while Mateta scored an excellent goal on the counter to put Palace temporarily ahead against City. It was good to see Mateta net in any way ahead of his upcoming double game week. He's got 4 goals in his last 6. Watkins punished all the sellers with a brace against Brentford and he's the first player to break 200 points now. After a hat-trick the week before, Foden was an unused substitute in that match, while De Bruyne started and his 18 points was top of game week 32. He started in the Champions League against Real Madrid and he did come off injured. Pep said it was just a knock post-match though. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't start against Luton though. I was considering a risky son to Foden transfer as a one-week punt, but I'll swerve that now. So here's how the team lines up this week and the transfer plans. In goal, Neto's home to Man United. Neither keeper of a favourable fixture this week, the Bravka's home to Spurs as well. Bournemouth given a 19% chance of a clean sheet, Newcastle 17%, so I'm not expecting much, but hopefully lots of save points if nothing else. Man United's 7.45 expected goals over the last 6 matches ranked 6th for worst in the league. Surprisingly, Brighton have fallen to rock bottom over that spell, while Liverpool comfortably top, which really underlines picking the right Liverpool assets for double game week 34 after Salah. Diaz versus Darwin's a close one, and Jota's nearing the return, which could impact their minutes. In defence, it's a back four in a 4-4-2, Saliba, Gabriel, Van Dijk and Gusto. A home fixture for Virgil. Surprisingly, they haven't kept a clean sheet at Anfield since game week 17 against Man United in the goalless draw. No doubt Allison's absence played a massive part in that, along with a few other injuries. The good news is Allison is also nearing a return, back in training along with Trent and Jota. So Liverpool are getting key players back at just the right time before the double game week. Double Arsenal defence home to Villa. With a couple of days extra rest as well, having played Champions League on Tuesday, with Villa playing in Europa Conference League Thursday night. Came across a great stat in a scout article by Late Riser. This season, Gabriel's taken 26 shots in the box, while the rest of the Arsenal defence combined of 27. Six big chances versus seven for the rest of the Arsenal defence. You can see this most weeks when you watch Arsenal. Gabriel's the one most corners fall to, he's the biggest aerial threat. I have earmarked a possible defender transfer this week, replacing Zabane. So a decision to make on benching Saliba to hedge against a clean sheet, or bench Gusto, who should be back in line for a start at Stamford Bridge. Pochettino said that Gusto needed to sit the Sheffield United game out due to illness, and therefore you'd imagine he's back in a starting 11 this week, especially after such a poor result drawing 2 all against Sheffield United. In midfield, it's Salah, Saka, Son and Palmer. Salah gets the vice captaincy. With Liverpool, City and Arsenal still in Europe, it won't be surprising this week to see the likes of Salah, Saka and Haaland have their minutes managed. Salah's still the king of FPL. No one can beat his 8.25 expected goal involvement over the last six matches. And likewise, over the season, his 24.4 expected goal involvement is top in the league. He's created 20 big chances this season, which is more than anyone else. Palace just conceded 4 to City last match at home, and it does feel like there's goals in this one. Let us know in the comments who your captain's going to be this week, Salah Haaland or maybe someone else. Even Sun's a strong captain choice this week away at Newcastle. Newcastle have kept just one home clean sheet since game week 17. Since Dubravka came into the side for the injured Pope, Newcastle have conceded 38 goals, only Brentford, Luton and Sheffield United have conceded more. And Newcastle's 39.4 expected goals conceded over that run is worse in the league. If Arsenal can edge a lead against Villa, then Saka's likely to come off early in my opinion. They're tied 2 all with Bayern Munich in the Champions League, heading into the second leg next week, playing at the Allianz Arena as well. He scored a well-taken curler to beat Neuer at the far post, and he did play the entire match. I'm expecting Jesus and Sinchenko to start this one against Villa, who were named on the bench midweek. 
This graphic from Radar FPL shows what a packed schedule Arsenal have got coming up. Four games over the space of nine days due to the double game week 34 plus Champions League. Spurs will blank in Gemic 34 as we know, so they're going to have a 15 day gap before the North London derby, while Arsenal will have a 5 day gap. I plan to wildcard in Gemic 35 that match anyway, so I might have no Arsenal players by that point for the run in, given they have no doubles thereafter. Chelsea's season is almost a write off at this point, but they are still in the FA Cup and they face Man City later in the month. Palmer's been signing for the season for me, if there's anyone else I'm forgetting drop a comment below. He's got 16 goals and 10 assists already. As a comparison, Hazard is considered an FPL legend and his best scoring season was 238 points from 16 goals 15 assists. So it's unlikely that he outscores Hazard's best season in terms of points, having missed a bunch of games at the start, but he's already level on goals scored and he's likely to finish on a high goal involvement overall, though in Hazard's defence he wasn't on penalties. The front two is Solanke and Haaland. Solanke's goals have dried up, he's got no returns in his last two, but I'm taking encouragement here this weekend given how leaky Man United have been. Granted, they have had so many injuries, and Ten Hag's actually named 31 different back four combinations, 58 injuries in total. Over the last 6 games, Man United have conceded 16.1 expected goals, which is worst over that run. So Haaland gets the captaincy. I'm expecting a somewhat rotated City side in a game that even their B team should win on paper. He's not looked his best recently, and there is a question mark where he starts this one. On paper, it's a logical game to start him to help him find some confidence with a goal or two. As we remember, he put 5 past Luton last time they played each other in the FA Cup, and that was without Rodri, who I'm almost certain will be among those rotated. If he doesn't start, then instead of being captain, he'll be sold this week, so it's going to be very dependent on possible early team news. More on that in a minute. The bench is Dubravka, Wang, Mateta and Zabane. Some regret in not selling Wang for Sarabia last week, who did score from the penalty spot though there's still potential to make a big upside move this week dependent on team news. As I said at the start of the video, I've got two free transfers and the team's not screaming for a particular transfer. This week it's very much dependent on team news. If O'Neill indicates that Huang's not ready to start or nowhere near, then I'll make the Huang to Sarabia transfer. Huang has been in training and he didn't make the bench last match. In an ideal world, he needs to make the bench this match, if I want to keep him. Their first double game fixture in 34 is Arsenal anyway. And I'm not expecting much from that game, so if he comes off the bench for that game and starts against Bournemouth, that's solid still. If we get news that Haaland starts and Huang's fitness is good, and I'm looking at a one-week punt in defence, most likely Zabani to Lewis or Regulon. Lewis should start home to Luton, and Regulon should start home to Sheffield United, and he got two assists last match. I'm sure the Haaland holders won't like hearing this, but I wouldn't mind at all if he's benched, because in that scenario, I'd make two transfers which would be Haaland to Tony and Huang to Luis Diaz. Very few are in a position where they're able to make a one-week punt on Tony home to Sheffield United. But just to walk through what that would look like on Plan FPL for this week and next, I'd switch to a 3-5-2 this week, and then in double gimmick 34, Tony drops to the bench, and Sun leaves the team for Eze, which gives me 11 double gimmick players still. That route by far has the most upside. I could also just do Haaland to Darwin, but I like the upside of the two moves involving Tony and Diaz a lot more. On the deadline stream, we'll be covering any early team news, so make sure you subscribe for that. Thanks very much for watching, see you soon for the next one.